Now when do we ask POIs? And how many POIs do we ask? First. How many POIs? <coughs> Guys, come on. As the Nancy Kiewitz Sequoia. Not really. And I'll I'll explain to you why. Yeah. Would the the optimal thing to do is to ask to is to is to take two POIs yeah, and ask it. You try to ask how many POIs, as many as you as you feel like. So you, can you stand up like all the time? You just keep standing and asking like one after another. Why not? <coughs> because you can't interrupt the speaker so much. Yeah, you, you just, yeah, it's it's quite polite to go ask. So how often is the is the best strategy? Yeah, the best strategy is like you should ask the POI every half minute at least. Yeah, twenty seconds is is an acceptable thing. Yeah. <coughs> Don't bother asking the POIs at the beginning when they are explaining the model because they are not going to take you and you are usually not going to get anything substantial from that POI. And so try to ask the POIs when they do argumentation. Yeah. And when is the right thing to take POI and when is the right thing to ask POI and when is the most likely that they will take you is in the break in their speech. There are some natural breaks in the speeches yeah, I think Tuna and uh, Radian already talked about it uh, late, <coughs> previously in the week. And these natural breaks are usually when they are switching from one argument to the other. Yeah? Or finishing the analysis and moving further. And you should try to ask them more, more. Yeah? Even during that analysis, they will just wave at you and sit you down. But there is nothing wrong with trying, yeah? You just stand up and yeah, if they wave you down, it's okay. If they don't, it's their fault. Yeah? And it's their strategic mistake and they are going to pay for that. Yeah? And you make sure they pay for that. And from the other point of view, when to take the POI is exactly when you are feeling the most, most comfortable with that. And with good teams, it's not a problem for you to take POIs pretty much whenever because they are asking the POIs constantly. Yeah. And you can, you can so somehow manipulate them to, to ask you that POI. When you make a pause, like don't make a half a minute pause just to push the other team to, take, to, to make the POI so you can take it. But when you, when you pause in your speech for two seconds, they usually jump up. Yeah? So try to modulate your speech in a way so they will feel that here is the place where he's making the pause that feels quite natural, so I'm going to ask them, and, uh, and I know that, that it doesn't sound real, but people go for it. People understand that they, they see the, the change in the words. Okay, this is a natural pause. Okay, this is the pause between the argumentation. Let's ask him something. Yeah. And then that's the time when you should take those POIs. <coughs> okay. Uh, when you should ask the first POI, the very, very first POI, or try to ask, yeah, stand up. Yeah, try to do that right after they, they finish the first minute. You know. Because the first minute, that's the first battle. Yeah, what, what, what does it mean, the first battle? Yeah, so you can, you can start asking. When you jump up straight away after the first minute, it shows that you are listening, that you are prepared for the debate. You know? The judges notice that. We notice things like this. Yeah. It was a very small thing, but we are very thorough beings, so we don't we don't notice everything you do in the debate, even how often you try to ask the POI. Yeah. 
Yeah? So when you ask after the first you do the first minute, it shows that you prepared the POIs before before the debate. And why should you prepare POIs before the debate? Because you don't have time during the debate to... Now, often you just don't have time to figure out the, the very good POI. Yeah? A very good POI <coughs> is the one that is short, but it's very, very difficult to answer. Yeah, you always have to and try to ask as hard POIs and as difficult questions as possible. And why? Because that's the strategy that will bring you the best results. The best results in staggering the, the debater that's just speaking. You know, when you ask him about something very, very easy, he's going to answer that in two seconds and your POI just to face it. You know? When you ask him something really hard, you might throw him off his speech so bad, he will lose a lot of time. And losing a lot of time in debate in those short eight minutes can mean a win or lose in the debate because they will just not be able to do the complete analysis, to finish their arguments, to do the, the proper illustration, or just do in general mistakes because they will be nervous of you because you will be the star debater. Okay, so what do, what do we know so far? So, we know what are the POIs, and yeah? that those are some kind of challenges to take control. We know when to take them, and we know that we need to take two. Why cannot we take four POIs, let's say? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to show that you are in the control. So when you are staying at speaker's points, you are the one who is controlling the debate. Yeah? You, at that point, you are the king of the debate. Don't let them take that control. And also, when you accept four POIs, it's very simple. It takes time. Because every POI, they usually ask for 15 seconds. If you are really good, really smart, and really prompt, you answer in 15 seconds as well. But it's still half a minute of your speech gone. So if you accept four POIs, that's two minutes. Yeah? Or even if you accept six, I saw that as well. That's two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes is more than one quarter of your speech. It's one whole argument, or one whole analysis gone. Yeah? So be very, very careful and very meticulous. And also be careful about the timing. Yeah? Because when you are asking the, the POI, it should be short. When you start explaining some, your argument, yeah? because we said it, the question or the statement. When you do the statement, don't do your arguments because they will just say it's not true if you ask them that. And if you start explaining too long, they have the right to wave you down because they cannot speak for half a minute. Yeah? And it's perfectly acceptable, or, or, or one whole minute. And it's perfectly acceptable for them then to, to interrupt you and please do that. Yeah? If, if the other debater tries to explain himself for two minutes, of course don't let him. Just tell him like, okay, you had your chances, of course, to be, be supposed to be short. And it's very, very important. Don't let them take the control of the debate. Retain your own. Okay, so we know that these are, so we've got two short and very difficult questions or statements we, we need to do. Okay, how to do POIs? How do you ask a POI? What do you actually physically do when you ask POI? You stand up. Yeah, you stand up. And what do you say? On that point. Yeah, on the point, sir. On the point, madam. Yeah? So, first of all, don't be rude. I go, don't be rude. Yeah, don't go like, hey, or hey you. Yeah, that's not how you do that. Yeah? Try to uh, sir, madam, on the point, sir, on the point, madam. Because if you, if you are rude, you are going to get punished. Yeah, basically, on the points. 
And then later I will explain you why even one point matters. Okay? Some, some examples from the class. Okay, so be very, very polite. Because when you show that you do have the etiquette and you don't need those cocky phrases and cocky postures to push the content you deliver through, you show that even when I'm fantastically polite and and me asking that might seem boring, the content is so strong that um, I am to I am able to destroy them anyways. Yeah, and that's even stronger in the eyes of the judge than when you go really like, oh come on, seriously? Yeah. Some communion debaters have likely been doing this online and other yeah. <coughs> okay, yeah. In fact, in British parliamentary they, they do this. Yeah. Why why do they do that? Oh. <laughs> okay, England, tell me. Um, they sh I don't think they should do it anymore, but it's because before people used to hold their hats from yeah. here. And they, they used to stand hands. up so that their hats would fall off. Yeah, the wigs. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they wore the loose white wigs. So they were, and what, why are they doing this? I have to show you the hands. <laughs> I have to show they are not armed. Okay. Okay, any questions so far? Or if you have any questions, just feel free to raise your hand and ask anything you need. Okay? Because it's, it's highly likely that I will forget something someday. Okay, so we know how to physically do that. Yeah, so we then we've already said that it's supposed to be short. Yeah, keep it short, keep it on the point, relevant to debate, relevant to what's been said. Okay, and try to say difficult questions or difficult statements. Okay, yes? Um, if, if you say that even if maybe you're a bit lost in the debate and you don't really talk what's going on and then I'm but you've got you need you say it better to put the point in the face and learn my game rather than put the learn point in the point. Yeah, that's unlikely because usually when when you are lost as a speaker. No no no, if say there's like a someone's talking. Um, yeah. It's bad not to put any point of information. Would it be better to put a quick point of information or no point of information? Rather than don't make a point of information. No. But the people who should ask, and I will talk about it a little bit, a little bit later, are those who are not preparing for the, for the consecutive speech. Yeah? So those two can really focus. And you can really do it, guys. Come on, yeah? It's eight minutes to figure out a hard question. Okay, so those are two people that can work together, they can even work together on that. So it's highly unlikely that the whole team just gets lost in the middle of the speech and has no clue what it, whatsoever what's happening in that speech. Yeah. If that happens, it's, it's kind of a bigger problem than the POI. Okay, where was I? Yeah, the questions. Okay, so what types of questions can we ask? Somebody. What types of questions do we know? Yeah, we've got open questions. Okay, open questions is something like, tell me about, I don't know, your holidays. And you go, my holidays were in France, and you know those friends, you think I live, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and you elaborate on that. So that's an open question. Or why did you do that? I did it because of blah blah blah. This reason. Okay, then we've got closed questions. Closed questions are the yes or no questions, basically. Yeah, you can answer yes or you can answer no. Should we ask closed, closed questions at the debate? 
and the POIs. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Why yes? Because uh, we are trying to get a point of something and if somebody is talking widely, it will be not sufficient to our team. Yeah. That's the problem with the yes or no questions is when you ask them, for example, do you agree with this, this, this and this? Are they going to agree with you? No. No, of course not. They are the opposition. Yeah, they are not going to say yes if, if it was the funny, the, the most obvious thing you asked them. Yeah, the, then probably they would say that the sun is shining. But that's it, yeah. So they are never going to agree with you, and that's something you need to understand as a person who is asking the POI. You, you need to be very cunning, and you need to be very sneaky to ask them the question. They would, they would screw up so bad to they say, tell you yes, because that's just not going to happen. They are the opposition team, and they will even tell you that. Of course not. I'm an opposition team. Okay, so, so that's not going to work. Are the open questions... Good. Yeah, open questions are precisely wrong because of the reason you told. Yeah? They give them too much space. Because then they go blah 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 and they will just walk away from the topic somehow. Yeah, the best strategy what you can do, and I understand you can't do that all the time, are optional questions. And that's kind of a hybrid between yes or no question and between and between open question. And what you do, you give them two options. You know? For example, do you think that this will be strategic for the Roma community, or do you think this will bring, uh, I don't know, a racism on a higher level through the, I don't know, educational problems? Yeah, and then you then you give them already two options, they are obliged to compare somehow. And so you set the ground, you set the limits of that question so they cannot, cannot slip out of it. And that's probably the best strategy you can do most of the time. Not all of the time, but most of the time. Okay. How should we answer the points of information? How should we answer the points of information? The best thing is to, to go offensive and not defensive. Offensive meaning try to, to involve and try to defend your own case through the answer of the POI. And that's not, that's not hard to do. Okay? That's just most of the time and most of the divided answers what I saw is just the change of the attitude. Yeah, how do you approach the question? And this mostly relates to the questions about the money or questions about the mechanism or something. Yeah? So when they ask you, for example, I don't know. Isn't this going to cost a lot of money and uh, destroy some kind of other funds for, for other other parts of the of the government or other parts of government plans. What could have been your answer when they ask you, is this going to cause isn't this cause going to cost a lot of money for for, for say? If you say yes, but the what act the results of what we're trying to implement well, is worth more than money. Yeah, this is fantastic. Answer. You say like, yeah, of course it is going to cost a lot of money, but look, we've got these huge benefits that just simply overshadow whatever is the loss, and it overshadows it hugely. Or even when you say no, there are two tactics how to say no, two ways how to say no. You can say, no, we've got a lot of money. Thank you. It's a state. There is plenty of money everywhere lying around. Or it's the United Nations. That's yeah. That's very popular. United Nations has huge amounts of money. Your question is irrelevant. 
Yeah? Does it feel strong, this answer? Yeah. No, it doesn't, right? Or you can say, okay, no, we will not spend more money. We will even save money. Like this, and this, and this. And these are the three reasons, right away. <coughs> yeah, I answered the question immediately. I strengthened my case immensely in the eyes of the judge. And because that shows planning and methodology on a very high level, and that's something we really, really like to see. Okay. catch you unprepared with a POI. <coughs> You've got a problem. So when it's a very good POI, you need to think about it for some time. Yeah. Eventually you will come to a point where you don't really need to think about it because you will be fantastic debaters yesterday we saw Adrian and Matavia and Hannah and they, they don't need that because they are that. Yeah, good. <laughs> Okay, but when you need to think about it, and it's perfectly okay, for a few seconds, what can you do? Can you go like, they ask you a POI and you go, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, here is the answer. Yeah? Or can you go like, okay, come. Does it show strength? Does it feel like you know what you are doing there as a speaker? And not, no, it doesn't. And they don't do that. Yeah. And every nation has a different one. Yeah? We slow it, we do mm, the Spanish will go A, eh, and everybody has his own thing. Yeah? So just try to avoid those. Okay? What can you do to show that you are strong and give yourself the time to think? Yeah? You can do what Tunadi did yesterday, or Sherba. Yeah? A bit like. Oh, that's a wonderful question. I'm very happy you asked it. Or, oh my God, that fits into my case fantastically. Thank you so much. Yeah, and that's 10 seconds. You've just spent saying something that you don't need to think about. And you can think about that point of information they asked you. Yeah, and when you practice this, you can say those blah 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 words that will give you those 10 seconds, those 10 crucial seconds or 15 seconds to ask, to think about the POI. Okay, I'll try to be more engaging because my is falling asleep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so any questions about that? One thing I forgot about. Do you have to acknowledge what the people are standing as a speaker? Yes? If you're at a very good point, then you will be able to get to the natural point. Or if you're in the middle of speaking and don't want to accept what you're Yeah, yeah, no, not take them, just acknowledge them. Yeah? You, you, you should. Yeah, because you don't want them to do the same to you, just wave them down. Yeah. Don't say like, you can say that if, if you are really, really polite, but, but I usually don't. And I think it's not a good thing to do. Because when you say, no thank you, and when they are standing every 20 seconds, that's a lot of no thank yous. And that's 24 no thank yous, almost. Yeah, and that's breaking your speech pattern. Yeah, so just wave them down. That's the best way out to do it. Yeah, just go sit down. Yeah. 
up here on the post here. Sit down. We'll talk together later. Okay. So we've covered what, when, and how. And now I would like to to speak about why. Why are the POIs important? And, and this is, I will talk about something that should motivate you. In the POI, the judges have the option in WSDC format to give you a plus point, yeah, to give you more points to the speaker. But then in general, your team is gaining from that as well. Yeah, and sometimes, when you are at the big tournament, they put up a certain you know, be in a forum in any of those big circuits. One point can mean that you are breaking or you are not breaking. Yeah. And this happens to countless teams I know, to countless debaters that have been banging their heads at the whiteboard because they didn't ask the POI. They were too lazy or too scared to ask the POI. Yeah? Or they, I say, too strong. Okay, so be very, very careful. I know that POIs they don't seem very important, but in those 15 seconds you ask him, yeah, in 15 seconds compared to 8 minutes, you can gain the point that can bring you to finals, yeah, or semi finals, or even win the finals. No. Okay, and also the importance of that. And that you can change the course of the debate with that one POI. When you ask them something very, very crucial, they need to restructure their argument right away. And when the speaker is standing there, the point is that he's there alone. And that's the time when you are confronting the speaker alone. And that's about the same point. Yeah? So he's there alone, he cannot, he can't consult with the team. So when you ask him a hard question, he's like, oh my god. What am I going to do? Okay, I need to answer this, but I need to also address this with the speech because it is so good. Yeah? Like this, very good debaters can fall as well. Yeah? So don't go easy on the POIs. Try to work on them and try to work on them in the preparation time. You try to go through the POIs during the prep. And you don't need to do it in the whole as the whole team. Like you don't need all three of you working on the POIs. Yeah. Select the part or segment of of the time for the prep. You have and assign one person to do that. You have to think about the POIs. Yeah. And when you do that, I guarantee you, you will ask one really solid POI to every speaker. Because you will have them prepared. Because you usually know what the other team is more or less going to talk about. And the POIs don't really need to be so specific on, on like very, very, very specific point of the speech. You yeah? can address the general case. It's okay, that's okay. So you <coughs> can prepare for that. But don't be satisfied with all, only with that. Yeah? You should prepare also with you should try to think about it also during the debate. And I've already told you, who shouldn't prepare the POIs during the debate? The next speaker. Yeah, the speaker who is up. Yeah, because he's usually thinking about what he's going to do. Yeah, so when he's talking, he's thinking about the POIs. You can include him, like to stand up or something, but be kind to your co-debaters, prepare some POIs for them. And you can go like just, hey, this is a fantastic POI. They don't expect you to rise. Ask this. If you arise and you can ask a POI. Yeah, because there is no follow-up. So he doesn't need to know, know even what's going on. He can just stand up, ask it, and sit down and prepare his speech, and you will be able to rise. Okay, follow-ups. That's another thing that's very important. Should you allow a person who asks POI to ask you another question? <coughs> I've seen this yesterday, 
No. Yes? Because it's not the dialogue. Yeah. And again, take control of your speeches. Firm grip, take control. Don't let them do something. Yeah. To ask you questions. And yesterday, God was very rude. He just asked the question, the speaker answered, and then he just went on asking. I'm like, oh God, sit down. Yeah. And he goes, you need punish for that. And what, where should you follow up the POI? When you get something really good from the POI, or you ask them and they don't answer it, should you follow up on that somehow as the person who asked the POI? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, when you when you get something really really clever from them during your POI, you yeah. should point it out to the to the judge in the next speech, and you should go like, look, I asked them this POI, and their answer was just some really really wrong thing. And like, how come they answered this? They are desperate, come on, obviously they don't know what they are talking about, for Christ's sake, that you cannot give them this win. Yeah, and then that's the point when the judge notices that. Because sometimes, we are also only like human beings, blah, 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 you know, the speech. But we, we are, yeah, sometimes we just don't get the POI, or we fail to notice it properly, but when you take it, and you bend it against our head, like, look, here is fantastic thing I found out. We will notice. Yeah, that's the point when we really know. And you need to do that with everything. You need to make the judge look at you and make the judge get what you just did. Yeah? And you need to be proud of what you just did. And you need to show him. It's again like, a, like with a child with children. Yeah? You just go like, look, 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 look what I have. And they will, they will give you points. They will reward you. We are, we are good parents. We reward our patients. Okay. So, why... Okay, when you ask the questions, now I will go to, I will do some do's and don'ts, and then I will go to who and who do. Okay, so, when you ask the question as a POI, why shouldn't we ask why questions? The question is start with why. Why shouldn't we do that usually? Why is it not not a good not so good a strategy? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah? When you ask like, why is this true? And they will just go, because what I just tell you. That are my arguments. Yeah. This is the case. This is why. Yeah, that's why I'm here standing for eight minutes. Yeah, hello, wake up. Yeah, so don't ask why questions. It's not good. Okay. Who? Who should ask the POS? The POS. Everybody, yeah? all members of the team, should ask POIs. You mentioned the best, best model that ever exists is that everyone asks everyone. And yeah, it's ideal. It's like fantastic. Well done. Yeah? But try to ask everyone and try to make everyone ask. If somebody on the team is just desperately horrible with POIs, 
and if and you have the experience of him screwing up POI so bad you don't want him to ask, give him a POI. You are a team, okay? You need to cooperate on a team level. Yeah, and that's a very good tactic as well. Yeah, don't do it too often, but you can just, when you have one very, very, very strong POI, you can just give it to everybody and they just rise all three. And whoever he picks, you've got that one very, very strong question. And so share the questions, share the POIs. Bless you. Share the POIs in the team. Yeah. So you, you are still a team and you are not a bunch of individuals that is going to win it one by one. You are still a team. All those points go for the team. Yeah, just be bigger than that. Okay, and who do we uh, take POIs from? So let's say you've got I don't know, two members of your Croatian national team or something, yeah, or two colleagues from your Croatian national team, and you are debating against them, or two members of your Venezuela national team, you are debating against them, and they are debating with Tuna, or they are debating with Radia. And all three of them rise, who would you take and why? The weakest. Yeah, and what happens when you take the weakness? You show that you're scared. You show that you're scared. Precisely, yeah? You show to the judge <coughs> that you are taking on purpose the weakest speaker of the team. Yeah? If you are not really sure with your case, then you probably don't want them to ask the hard questions. It's very simple logic. When you take Tuna, what you are showing is, first of all, that you've got balls. Second of all, that you really, really know your case. And you think that, oh my God, I'm so confident, I will take anybody in this room. And I will answer it so well, my case will stand. Even after that POI, Tuna asked me. Yeah, and you saw it yesterday that it's, it's possible. Yeah? Even Tuna and even Rivian and even Felix are sometimes possible to answer. Yeah? <coughs> okay. So, who. Okay. <clears throat> what you are also doing by by asking all debaters or taking all debaters, also all speakers, as a speaker, you are speaking and by taking all three of them, you are also finding out who of them is the strongest. Yeah, because often you don't know the team. And it's a good thing to know some things about the speakers of the team. Because you then know who to who you can, you know, cycle bubble into something into doing something stupid or dropping the case by the POI. But you need to find out who are these people. Yeah, and you cannot really approach them on the individual level and the rest of the debate. This is this is your chance to find out some, some more about, it, about them. Something like, are they strong? Can they ask, if they ask you a very, very hard question, yeah, they are probably smarter. <coughs> if they ask you, just like, how was your practice as a POI, obviously they are some kind of bigger. And you don't really need to be that scared of them. So that's, that's one of the tactics how to find out like what, what the team is up to. Okay, any questions about, about what we said so far? Okay, so we, we know the POIs are challenging. We know that they need to be short 
and they need to be challenging for the speaker that's just speaking. Yeah, very short and very challenging. Yeah, and we need to ask them all the times. And we need to take the POIs, and that's very important, when we are confident. When we are comfortable with the POI. Because we are the kings of the debate right now. When you are standing here, you are the boss. You are the delegate. Okay? So, so then, yeah, natural breaks. Natural breaks somewhere between the argument. Somewhere after, the best thing is, take a your after you finish your strong point. Because that's something you are confident with. And the confidence usually projects into a POI. Yeah, because when we are happy with something, we just said, it's probably good. Yeah, sometimes it's not. It's <laughs> Most of the time it is. And it's again about psychology, somehow. Because the confidence, we can, we can convince the, the, the judge with our confidence that we, we understand what we are talking about. We can answer anything. Okay. And who, oh, yeah, try to, try to take the strongest debater, try to show you are, you are really, really good. Okay, so, now to some do's and don'ts. Do write down your POIs. Do write them down. A lot of debaters do the same mistake. Even judges, <laughs> yeah, when they debate at the university, do not. And yeah, do write them down. Because what might happen is that they, someone will be speaking or just finishing his sentence and you will stand up. Yeah? And they will say, like, I'll take you in a moment. Like, they, they can do that. Yeah. Yesterday, you saw them also. Yeah. I'll take you in a minute. Yeah. And then sometimes what happens, they will just go on and on and on about it. And they will just go for another half a minute. And in half a minute, you can end up like Philip. But then forget it. Because you didn't write it down. Write them down. Even if you are super confident, write them down. And what happens when you write down the POI? You see it. Yeah. You see it, and you can say, like, huh, is this the POI I really want to ask? Is this the strongest thing in how I can phrase this? It might be not. Yeah. So you try to do that. Or if you don't, Write it down, just go over and over it. About in your head, so you don't forget the POI. And usually you will eventually phrase it the best that you can. Okay? Who are you looking at when you are asking the POI? That's another. The, the person, when you ask the POI, it's Peter. The speaker, yeah. And when you ask the POI, the audience, who is the audience? The judge. The judge. Yeah? You will say, okay? Thank you. Ta da 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 da. Yeah, dear judges, I will explain how this POI is so mediocre. They are just wrong. This thing is just wrong. Yeah? So the judges, because you are always talking to the judges and Mr. Speaker, so Mrs. Speaker. Good. Okay, what happens if you don't understand the POI? Because this can happen for a couple of reasons. <coughs> Why can you have problems understanding the POI? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? You have an accent. Yeah. 
A lot of people have problems, even with native speakers. Scottish people, yeah, they, their accent is just horrible. I personally like it, but it can confuse you. Yeah. Or, or also it's going to pay. And, uh, what, 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 what yeah. So accent, accent. What else? And the way they phrase their question. Yeah, the way they phrase their question. And what you need to understand is sometimes, and it's more than less, yeah. more times than less, is what happens is that they really are incomprehensible. They really ask a question that is just not logically correct, or just does not make sense. Yeah. And it's not just you who didn't understand it, it's just judges going, what? <laughs> yeah, what? what? What just happened? Yeah. And then it's very good to look at the judge. Because some of the judges are very poker face, but some of them are not. And you just look at the judge, and the judge is going like, I don't understand this either. I, I don't know what just happened. Yeah? It's good to tell him that, to tell the judge that the question does not make sense. Because that's not your mistake. Yeah, it's their job to ask a question that makes sense. It's not their job to ask you an easy question. Their job is just to ask the question that makes sense. So go away. Okay. <laughs> this does not make sense. Yeah, ask me later. Try to rephrase it. Ask me later. Yeah. If you already took two, too bad. Yeah. You might be very, very polite and you know, be very good. It's their fault. They put up. What do you do if you don't understand the accent? It's not the best strategy. So you are wasting all the time. If it's really, really just a thing about the very good accent, you can't try to ask it. But just try to answer to the best of your abilities. Yeah, try to answer everything what you've heard and, and understood, more or less. Yeah, try to do that. That's, that's, that's what how you think. Okay. Yeah, happens when somebody tells you, I will answer your POI in my speech. I'm not going to deal with this, I'm going to answer it in my speech. I also saw it yesterday, Sherman. Are you okay? Brilliant, thank you. I have it in my case. The answer to your question is in my case, I will talk about it later. Can you do that? Yes? No? Yes, yes, you can do that. But when you do that, you must point that when answering their question, you know part of the speech. You don't necessarily lose the points, yeah? Depends on the judge. But most of the judge wouldn't like deduct points for that. Most of the judges will go like, okay, he did that. <coughs> This is a red circle, and if you don't answer the POI, you're screwed. You have to answer the POI, and you have to tell the judge. Now I'm answering that POI they asked me. Yeah. <coughs> so you have to do that. You can do that. You can tell them, I will answer you in my speech because it's already there. But you have to answer them then. But why is it not a good strategy to do this? <coughs> why is it not good? How does it look? How did you feel when Sherban yesterday said, it's in my speech, I'll answer you later? How did he look? 
Sorry? Insecure. Insecure. Yeah? It makes you look insecure. It makes you look covered. It makes you look like you need three or four minutes of your speech to figure out the answer about this simple POI. What's about that? Yeah? Try to answer them right away, even if they are part of your argument. It's better to answer them right away. It's better to go, I will answer you right now, shortly, just to the point. But I've got an argument about it as well. Thank you for the POI, it's fantastic. Well done, well done. Okay. Do you have any questions? No questions. How about that? Yeah, and also one thing. Try to ask for something that is going to fit into your argumentation. <coughs> yeah. So don't just try to, to, to be destroyed. Try to be constructive with your question. Try to benefit from those 15 seconds you get of that speaker because those are yours when you ask the question. Okay. Try to ask for something that will fit. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see some of you maybe in the exercises. Enjoy. Bye.